Do you know that there is only one God in three eternal persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Do you know that Jesus said he is the only way to heaven, and his death and resurrection bring forgiveness of sins to all who believe? Welcome to the Pastor Study, a ministry of pastorstudy.org. Join us now as we study God's Word, the Bible, together. Welcome to the Pastor's Study. Well, this program originates in Minnesota, but now we're on all over the country. But don't touch that dial. If you live in Topeka, I want you to hear what is happening in the state of Minnesota. At the last election, the Democrats got the trifecta, the governorship, the state senate, and the state house. And now radical legislation is going through at a breakneck pace like we've never seen in our state. First, we just passed the, perhaps the most pro-abortion bill in the country. Next on the docket is they want to legalize recreational marijuana use. Next on the docket, they want to ban youth from getting help for unwanted same-sex attraction. And then the worst, perhaps of all, maybe not worse than abortion, but making Minnesota a gender-affirming care state where we would chemically castrate children. That's uh, it's just evil what's happening. So don't touch that dial because this is affecting your children. I want to introduce uh, State Senator Glenn Grunhagen. Thanks for coming, Glenn. No, thanks for having and, me. And we're going to talk through these issues that I just mentioned. It's incredible what's happening. I mean, I know what's happening in Oregon and California. The most liberal state in the, in the Midwest is, is Minnesota and what this is going to do to us. So, Glenn, thank you for coming. we got to talk about this. And Amen. Before we start, though, I always like to ask, Glenn, how did you come to know Christ? Well, thanks for asking, Pastor Brock. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, I, when I got out of the Marine Corps, I uh, started dating my wife, Emily, my lovely wife, Emily. And... Uh, <laughs> At a, and I also had become addicted to smoking in uh, the Marine Corps. And I had tried to quit smoking probably a dozen times. And, you know, I threw them away and then I'd buy some more back. And, uh, and my, wife, my future wife, she started uh, suggesting that I should quit smoking. Um, so I did uh, commit my life to Christ. And then I quit smoking. And it... it in a small way, I would, some would call a miracle, I, he took the desire huh. for smoking away. And huh. all of a sudden I was able to quit. Even though I was living with another roommate, a man who smoked heavily. <laughs> and uh, so he kept blowing smoke in my face. <laughs> but, but, it, but the Lord just took the desire away and I haven't Great. smoked ever since. There you go. And, uh, so, and I happened to commit my life to Christ on my wife's birthday. Okay, so uh, that was a blessing. So you were older when you came to Christ. Amen. All right, so now, Glenn, let's get into radical politics and how they're coming for our children. Let's start with the unborn children. Amen. Minnesota used to have, we've always been a pro-choice state. Amen. We used to have some minor restrictions like if a 15-year-old if a wants an abortion, at least the parents need to know about it. Amen. And a doctor needs to be in the room to do an abortion. Those are gone now, aren't they? That's correct. Are yep. there, and, and abortion in Minnesota, some states say not after so many weeks. They just knocked some of that down, didn't they? That's correct. What's the, what's the, the, we, you can get an abortion on the day of delivery. Amen. And, yeah, I have a copy of the bill right here. It ahead. was Senate file number one. Yeah. And they call it the Reproductive Health Rights Bill. Doesn't I, that sound nice? I call it the pro-death bill yeah. and the exploitation of yeah. our minor children. Because yeah. in this bill, uh, it covers things like sterilization, uh, preconception care, maternity, abortion care. And it allows abortion right up to the moment of birth. Yeah. So, you know... The surveys I've seen, most Minnesotans, the majority, are okay with abortion in the first trimester or three months. But the overwhelming uh, amount of Minnesotans are against abortion in the second and third trimester. This bill allows abortion right up to the moment of birth. The other thing it does, it strips any type of protections away from minor uh, girls. Yeah. In other words, minor girls can go have an abortion 
without parental notification. And you can't get a, I don't think a 14 year old can take a aspirin without parental consent, but now she can get an abortion in our enlightened state. Yeah, what I did, I renamed this bill a little bit. Um, it's the, uh, we're one of the top states in the nation as far as sex trafficking for young girls. The average age is somewhere between 14 and 16 years old. Here in this bill, we're stripping away all protections from young girls. So it's a pro-sex trafficker bill. That's what you have here, mm -hmm. okay? And the other thing, it's a pro-Planned Parenthood bill yeah. because they prey on these young people. Yeah. You know, on the Senate floor, I said, you know, Margaret Sanger was a founder of uh, Planned Parenthood. A racist? She was a white supremacist and racist. Mm -hmm. She believed in eliminating certain minorities, including the Negro population. Yeah. Okay, the question is, does Planned Parenthood carry out that same philosophy today? Well, in New York, the, there's more black babies aborted than are born, according to published results. Yep. Yep. Also, blacks are about 15 to 16% of our U.S. population. They're close to 40% of our abortions in the nation. Yep. Now that's white supremacy they'll, they'll, and racism. They'll claim okay? that they renounce Margaret Sanger, but they're doing her will. And again, that's the white, on the Senate floor, I said, this. if you vote for this bill, you're voting for an organization that promotes white supremacy and racism. Amen. And uh, we need to understand that. And so, Glenn, three, three minutes from my house, a Planned Parenthood abortion clinic opened up. I feel like I'm driving by Auschwitz every day because that's where they kill unborn children. People think Planned Parenthood is this nice organization, hands out condoms. Well, they're killing babies at Planned Parenthood uh, offices. So, th but the thing flew, the thing went through. Yeah, this bill has been signed into, into uh, law by Governor Walls. Yeah. And I think there was one Democrat in the House that voted against it, none in the Senate. And there's only a one vote majority in the Senate. I explain this to me. Years ago, there was a group called Democrats Pro-Life. The last time I saw them was when Obama originally was nominated at a convention. And they, uh, up in the stands were some Democrat pro-life and their signs were being beaten down. Do they even exist anymore? And there aren't many of them, I'll tell you that. Yeah, yeah. They have been eroded and uh, I don't know what type of pressure they're receiving, but in the Senate, they voted all our, I think we offered close to 60 amendments, mostly for the protection of second and third trimesters where the baby could survive. Uh, and we also had an amendment. And all of those lost. Yeah, they were all voted down or ruled out of order. And they also ruled out of order an amendment that would prohibit the selling of baby parts, which we know Planned Parenthood has, has been done. caught red-handed doing. And, and that lost. Right. And you know, if I can just interject with the church, Governor Walls is a very pro-abortion rights governor. Correct. In fact, he said when he was running, even Nancy Pelosi told me to tone down my language being so pro-abortion. He's a Lutheran. I know. I'm a Lutheran pastor. And so I'm just interjecting this. When my former, when I was still in the ELCA liberal branch of Lutheranism, Bishop Herbert Chilstrom was my very liberal bishop in favor of abortion rights, in favor of gay marriage, in favor of practicing gay pastors. When he died, Governor Walls was at his funeral. And I don't know, my guess is that he knew Herbert Chilstrom. And if your bishop is telling you abortion is okay, uh, homosexuality is okay. Ah. I know, it sends a green light to parishioners rather than the principles and truth of, of God's yeah. word. You know, the, um, uh, oh, what was I going to say? The, you know, they passed a bill that gives it as a fundamental right. And it also contains the word, but is not limited to. So in my opinion, if you study the eugenics movement back in 1907 and 1930, mm -hmm. where they decided to sterilize uh, certain, what they considered undesirable people who should not reproduce, this bill has the same uh, uh, principles in it. It's optional right now, but it wouldn't take much to change this into mandatory. And then we're down that same road of eugenics, which got popular both in the U.S. and also uh, in Europe. And of course, one nation took it to an extreme, okay? 
And, but that's where we're at. And, and I know some of the uh, Democrats say, well, all this does is solidify Roe v. Wade. This goes much further than Roe v. Wade. This is the killing of right. unborn children. Okay. And the Up to the day of birth. Right. And, and the other thing I said on the Senate floor, women need to understand that abortion and pornography sends a certain message t to men. Yeah. To, to, it objectifies them. Yeah. So women who, who care about this issue and women being abused, they should look at limitations on abortion and they should also oppose the pornographic uh, sewage which is flooding our society. Oh All right, let's move on to recreational marijuana use. Now some states, what about eight of them, already have that. Correct. What's, we haven't passed that. Are we going to? No, we had medicinal. That's what yeah. we had before. Now they want but now the, the DFL is proposing recreational. And here's the thing, even those who favor it, and I do have some in my district, this bill has not passed yet, okay, and has not been signed into law. But it has a maze of 14 different licenses, which is going to be confusing. It also creates a huge government bureaucracy at the state level. It also contains the words social equity grants. What that means is there's, there's pots of money to start up the sale of this, and it's gonna be distributed based on what's known as social e equity grants. What that means is it's gonna be targeted to communities that have been disproportionately affected by uh, negative marijuana laws. Okay, so you know where it's going? Back My, to the minority, supporters yeah. in the uh, Hennepin and Ramsey County. Oh. And the rest of the state is going to be discriminated Isn't against. Isn't that sad? So <laughs> even those who support this uh, that I've talked to and also other senators have great concerns about the way the bill's you written. You think it'll go? Well, it has a lot of impetus behind it. It did accept in one committee, huh. uh, most of our amendments have been voted down on the Republican side but they did accept a few on this bill uh, in one of the committees that I wasn't on, but I got reports from some Republicans. So everybody pray for Minnesota. If you live in Rhode Island, pray for us. And let's move on to the next one. Okay. Um, there is a bill that, I mean, if people watch the show, they know that I've struggled with same-sex attraction most of my life. Yep. I was happy when I was young to get some good counseling. Mm. Well, now the liberals in Minnesota want to ban youth from getting help with unwanted same-sex attraction. Correct. they got to ban that. They call it conversion therapy. Who knows what that means? It means something different for everybody. Is that evil or what? Here's a 16-year-old that wants help dealing with the same-sex attraction because he doesn't believe in it because he's a Christian. Nope. We're going to ban that in Minnesota. Yeah, that's correct. And again, it goes with the title of our program here. The liberals are going after your children, especially, especially minor children, one, and trying to cut off parental and societal protections for those children. Yeah. And this is another example, the conversion therapy. Now with the pro-abortion bill, they kept saying we need to get the government out of the decision. It's such a personal decision. <laughs> we need to get the government <coughs> out. Not on this one. On conversion, we need to insert the government into it and prevent the doctor-patient relationship for whatever that is, if the person is struggling with, with some of those uh, uh, behaviors and desires, we want to insert government and say to the counselor or, or to the uh, therapist, you cannot try to, to tell him that what he's doing isn't right. You must reinforce his behavior. And isn't that evil? Oh. To a certain degree, you almost believe you know, that these minors are being groomed for pedophilia. Who knows? In other words, you're trapped in this sexual behavior before uh -huh. you should be, uh -huh. and now we want to ban you from even getting any type of information. And it, there is some concern it could even apply to pastors and people outside. And whatever happened to religious freedom? Amen. If a 16-year-old wants help from his uh, counselor or Christian counselor, uh, so now you're going to ban? I mean, this is evil. Yeah, and personally, I have gay friends in fact my first bill that ever got through the house the senate and governor dayton signed i had a uh, homosexual lobbyist 
that help me with that. But I also have former gay friends, okay? Yeah. People have left the lifestyle, right. gotten married, and have children. Yep. Yep. So, I mean, the point is the government is coming in with a heavy-handed approach, mm -hmm. primarily the DFL and Governor Walls, and saying you cannot try to help this child who's struggling with these problems. Do you think this one will pass? It has a lot of impetus behind it, and we need people to get involved. Yeah. Minnesotans, you're your uh, it. your state is being drastically changed especially for your children in your schools and also in uh, taking away traditional protections for them please get involved governor walls and the dfl does need to hear from you because we're going down a very dark path that is going to seriously damage our children here in the state of Minnesota. So call your legislators Amen. and then vote for the right people. Amen. All right, now this one is the last one, then we'll talk about other things. Sure. Uh, I think it's a transgender state senator has now proposed a bill. I could be wrong on that, but it looks like a trans... I think a, a House member. A House member wants to make Minnesota a safe state for gender-affirming care, yep. which means if a... If a 12-year-old wants hormone blockers to be able to not develop naturally, we'll give them the hormone blockers in Minnesota. And uh, can you explain more of what this is? Well, we're creating a gender-affirming sanctuary state here in Minnesota. Again, this bill has not passed yet, so Minnesotans, get involved yes. if you care about the children. Yes. And we're talking about mutilating surgery to minor children. We're talking about cross-sex hormones. We're talking about the, the data shows that when children go through this, their thoughts of suicide go up exponentially yes. and in fact the, the actual suicide rate in more than doubles in some cases. There are lawsuits by uh, people who have gone through this trans, transgender surgery and mutilation uh, with regrets to sue the doctors who did this on them. Mm -hmm. uh, but here in Minnesota, we want to push as many people through without parental notification in some cases. Oh and then we want to teach in our classrooms uh, it down to the elementary level. You need to decide whether you're a boy or a girl. I'm sorry, I believe in science and biology, yes. not feelings. Feelings come and go. Yeah, and, and it's the liberals always say, I'm for science. Well, on this one, I'm for science. Yeah, that's correct. They're the ones who are denying biology. And so much of this, these cross-sex hormones and mutilating surgeries are, you can't reverse them, okay? Yeah. And there's dozens and dozens of former transgenders who regret doing yes. this. Yes. And to do it to a child who does not have the mental capability it's of, just, of weighing the consequences. And if you leave these kids alone, what? 80% of them come out of it on their own. Close to 90%. 90%. Unless you indoctrinate them with this yeah. philosophy. And I know someone who's going to leave money in her will to Children's Hospital of Minneapolis. And I think I tried to make the point, I wouldn't give them a penny. They, they don't do the gender surgeries on the children, but I believe they do the hormone stuff. Yeah. I wouldn't give anybody money. I wouldn't give uh, Children's Hospital of Minneapolis a penny. So. Is this going to go through? It does have impetus behind it and, and quite a few authors. It looks like it's on the move. So again, Minnesotans, oh now's the time to step up for the protection of the children. Okay. Who, who would have thought when you and I were young, Glenn, that, um, that Americans would think it's okay to castrate children uh, who, th who are confused about their sexuality. And, Amen. And, and, you know, I'm going to add this. Again, the church is at fault. A I big used, part of it. I yep. used to be part of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, which has gone horribly liberal. They pay in the ELCA health care plan for abortion for any reason. You're offering dollars at work. Yep. The ELCA health care plan now also pays for gender blockers for children and sex change operations for adults. You're offering dollars at work. Uh, a few years ago, there was an 11-year-old boy who thinks he's a girl. They put him on stage at the teen convention, and 31,000 Lutheran teen teenagers had to listen to this boy talk about yeah. transgenderism, and, and they were promoting, and they still are, they are, they are promoting, the LCA had the world's first transgender bishop. So, I mean, when the church is that messed up, 
What do you expect the state to do? Exactly, and that's one of the reasons I'm so thankful for your ministry, Pastor Thank you. Brock. Thank because you. you preach the truth yeah. on a regular basis and make it in a way applicable to people's lives. Right. You know, if I can say one thing from a Christian standpoint, Please. we know in reading the Bible that when a society goes after and kills its innocent children and destroys them, like through gender uh, surgery and cross act, that there is a satanic perspective on that. So, I mean, it's Satan going after the children. So please, please get involved politically. There's still time to stop some of this stuff, but the urgency is great. They have been uh, fast-tracking so many bills right through the legislature, and uh, we really need to see uh, Minnesota voters, yep. especially in some of those critical districts, step up and mm -hmm. uh, apply apply uh, pressure on their elected uh, DFL representative. And, and if you live in Tennessee and you've got much better government than we got, make sure you still are involved so it doesn't become Minnesota. And you know, th to me, this is Romans chapter one. Amen. When people reject God, it says he gives them over to a depraved mind. mind. And again, who'd have thought that a church, a denomination, a state would affirm gender-affirming care. Isn't that a pretty way to make yeah. it? You know, it used to be called abortion. Well, it's now, like, now it's abortion care. Or health like, care, yeah. Yeah, yeah, come on. Or they want to change an unborn child to the word fetus. Oh, that's right. Because so that, yeah. then you can kill it more easily and not, that's right. not bother your conscience. So, Glenn, what's it like on the floor down there? I mean, there are a lot of Christians, legislators, yes, aren't there? correct. What's it like down there? Is it bitter? Is it well, light? What's it like down there? You know, one thing I would ask everyone to do, especially in Minnesota, is pray for Governor Walz and the DFL. I do regularly. Just so okay? people know, that's the Democratic Farmer Labor Party yeah. that's used to be kind of good. It's become horribly liberal, but go ahead. Now it's just the Democrat Party. Yeah, yeah. But uh, pray for them. Uh, I try to do that regularly, and that, um, you know, the Lord taught me a number of years ago that my responsibility is to be a witness to people. It's God's responsibility to change their heart. And once I learned that, the Christian life became a lot easier <laughs> because I'm simply responsible to tell the truth. It's God's responsibility to take that truth and change people's hearts. As long as we keep that separate, it's a lot easier but Christian it, but life. But here's what would be frustrating <laughs> for me. And is it, do you see any of these hearts changed? Well, and that's the good news, okay? okay. Uh, and I'll use the example of Bernard Nathanson. Okay. He oversaw over 75,000 abortions in the city of New York, okay? He personally conducted over 5,000 of, of the abortions. And yet one day he became pro-life and he created the documentary, The Silent Scream, which showed an unborn child trying to get away from the, the medical needle. instrument yeah. that was trying to kill it. Yeah. And ultimately and it, it changed did. his mind. He became a Catholic. Amen. <laughs> the scales fell off his eyes and conscience and God was able to convert him. So when that bill passed in the Senate, I did, make the, I did give that example and I said, you know, if you vote for this bill, to kill unborn children right up to the moment of birth. I said, there is hope for you, okay? <laughs> and I gave him the Bernard Nathanson's. Oh, good for you. So that's why it's so important for us to pray for Governor Walz yes. and the DFL yeah. so that we can put some reason and medical uh, science back into yeah. uh, this deadly bill yeah. that's killing the innocent. Wow. And, and you know, just think of, let's bring Jesus into all this. Amen. When little six-month-old Jesus inside of Mary's womb walked in the room, little unborn John the Baptist leapt for joy inside in of his mother's womb. <laughs> and, and there you have little unborn children who are human, experiencing human emotions, and in Minnesota will kill those babies at nine months. Amen. And we know when life begins, you can go on the internet, mm -hmm. It begins at conception. There's even a little light that comes on when conception happens. You can check that out on the internet. Mm -hmm. So biologically, we know when that happens, life begins, there's separate DNA, it's a human being. Yes. And it, you know, even in this state, if you uh, have a car accident with a pregnant woman who dies and, yeah. the, and the unborn child, you get charged with two crimes. So are we being schizophrenic or what? It is schizophrenic. Yeah, yeah. And we know that that is definitely 
not based on the Christian principles, Amen. but it's satanic. Well, everybody, we're going to put Glenn's uh, contact. If you have a question about any of this or you want to support him or, or you want to know how do I work to turn things around, um, his name is Senator Glenn Grunhagen. And can we put his uh, his email and stuff up as well? Is that going to work? Oh, there it is. Uh, email is right there. His phone number is right there. And uh, so just leave that up for a minute. And if you'd like to um, get information or whatever. But, you know, it's, it's kind of easy. If you go to the website, it's easy to find. I found mm -hmm. my uh, uh, state senator. And yeah, you just have to we uh, yep. Minnesota Senate website yep. and it comes and right up. And even though I knew this wasn't going to do any good because her mind is made up, I still do it. It's Amen. better than doing nothing. Well, the Bible commands us to yeah. be a witness. There you go. And uh, uh, I like your point that you're called to be a witness, not necessarily to succeed. Amen. And I knew a pastor who had a, a sign on his desk, called to be faithful, not successful. Amen. And I, I, we, we did a series a while ago on the second coming of Christ. I don't know that we are going to be successful until the second coming of Christ. Well, and the, uh, the thing is, is when you're persecuted, and uh, the Bible is, and Jesus is an ex excellent example. Remember when he was on the cross? Who became a Christian that day? Two people you wouldn't expect. Yeah. The centurion, yeah. because he saw the way Christ responded, he probably had crucified dozens of people. Yeah. Nobody acted like that. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Yep. And then one of the thieves on the yeah. cross. Now, most of us would say that would be the worst day of our life to be crucified. Guess what? Turned out to be the best day Amen. for him. He there got to go. go to heaven that day. That's a good point. Thank you, Glenn. <laughs> well, Glenn, thank you for all you're doing. And I just want to say to our, our viewers, <clears throat> can you just take a moment and bow your head and let's pray. God the Father, we pray for the whole nation of uh, the United States. We're just going 100 miles an hour in the wrong direction. We pray, God, that somehow you would overthrow abortion, pornography, premarital sex, homosexual marriage, gender-affirming care, all these crazy things that have invaded. Some, Lord, somehow, Lord, turn things around. And we pray, Lord, that Christians would stand up and not be quiet and that they would share their faith in Christ, but also share their Christian values. But if we don't have them, we're going to go down, Lord. So please raise up a lot of people listening to this very TV show that will start to speak and to pray for our government. We pray it all in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And Amen. Pastor, I'd just like to pray a blessing for you. Okay. And Lord, just thank you for Pastor Brock. Thank you for his willingness and uh, steadfastness in pro proclaiming the truth of the gospel for our, a world that in many cases is lost and going the completely wrong direction for the mm -hmm. benefit of our children and grandchildren. Yes, Father. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, again, thank you, Glenn and everybody. See you next week. Thank you for watching the Pastor Study. You can watch more of our programs at pastorstudy.org. We are on the air preaching the good news of Jesus Christ because of the generous support of you, our viewers. Would you consider supporting our ministry? You may do so at pastorstudy.org or write the Pastor Study, P.O. Box 41294, Minneapolis, Minnesota 55441. May the blessing of our one triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and forever.